Welcome to the St James Communion service today. Some of the churches are open today. They've started to resume worship in the building. Uh, we've not chosen to do that because there are all sorts of things that need to be put in place. But I'm also mindful, reading the guidance that was published last Tuesday evening, uh, the guidance makes it clear that services just wouldn't be the same as we've been used to. Uh, for example, it's all right to gather and to uh, listen and join in with the prayers, but fellowship is not possible. A large part of what it means to be church physically together will be missing in that scenario. And so it's good to just take our time and make sure that we get things right. There are also limitations on the number of people who can be present. So there are all sorts of things that would be not quite what we would prefer to have. But let's make the most of what we do have as we gather today for our worship together. And let's pray our familiar uh, opening prayer. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. people have been maintaining their donations to the church and so let's celebrate that by joining in together with our offertory prayer. Yours Lord is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you and of your own do we give you. Amen. God calls us to come before him with joy. But as we do that, we need to come before him recognising our own sinfulness and shortcoming and listen for his word of redemption and forgiveness. God, be gracious to us and bless us and make your face shine upon us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Make your ways known on earth, your saving power among the nations. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You, Lord, have made known your salvation and reveal your justice 
in the sight of the nations. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Lord enrich us with his grace and nourish us with his blessing. May the Lord defend us in trouble and keep us from all evil. May the Lord accept our prayers and absolve us from our offences for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. There's an overlap between the Gloria and the Bible reading that we will have in a few moments, bringing out a note of joy. Let's join in with the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Gospel reading is taken from Luke, chapter 2, starting at the first verse. The birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favour rests. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. I wonder if in these months of lockdown you have received good news. News that's caused you great joy. One of the lovely pieces of good news that I've received and that has caused me joy was shared with some of us, not by a choir of angels in the fields, but via our weekly steadfast Zoom meeting on a hot Sunday evening. And that good news was that Amy and Ben are going to have a baby. We all exclaimed with joy and tried to smile at them both in that slightly strange stilted way of a Zoom meeting to show that this was really good news that we were sharing in. News of a baby is almost always good news that brings joy both to the parents and to friends and family members. But I think in these strange times that we're living, these times especially a few months ago, when almost all the news we saw and read and talked about was news of illness and death, the news of a new life, the news of a potential birth, felt like really good news for everyone, a sign of health and life in the midst of sickness and death. It felt indeed like news of great joy. 
So is that what the angel meant when he spoke to the shepherds on the hillside in our reading? Was it an announcement of the birth of a baby that was to be the cause of great joy for everyone? Well, partly yes, but partly no. Because of course this wasn't going to just be any baby. Precious and special though they might be to their friends and family. This baby was to impact the whole world. This baby would change everything. Because the, in the angel's word, this baby is the saviour. This baby is the messiah. This baby is the Lord. Saviour, Messiah, Lord. Big important words used by the angel to describe a tiny baby. Big significant words that speak into some of the longings and yearnings we have as human beings for life to be better or fairer or less painful. Big significant words that it's worth trying to understand and savour as we move into this next new phase of lockdown. As followers of Jesus who are attempting to live joyfully and well in the midst of uncertainty and change. So what might Luke have meant by using those words in his account of Jesus's birth? And what might it mean for us today as we face an uncertain future in Tunbridge Wells? After promising news of great joy, the angel goes on to say, Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. This reference to David reminds Luke's readers of the shepherd king, of that golden age of Jewish history where their enemies had been driven out and when the land that they had inhabited was truly theirs. This, of course, is contrasted with the beginning of the bit of the passage and Caesar Augustus's decree for a census to be taken. The Jewish people did inhabit the land where David had ruled, but only under Roman occupation. A saviour in the shepherds' minds then would probably be someone who would drive out the Romans and establish once again the Davidic rule. Another word for saviour is rescuer. For the Jewish people of the time, a saviour would rescue them from the Roman oppression. I wonder what a saviour or rescuer might look like for us at the moment. Maybe our saviour is the person who discovers the vaccine for COVID-19. Someone who can solve one of the current problems we're going for. But of course, this saviour that the angel speaks about does so much more than this. Good news that brings joy to the whole world is much bigger than this. Because Jesus, through his life, death and resurrection, would rescue us from the oppression of de death itself and offer us the gift of eternal life. The angel then explains that Jesus is the Messiah, that person that had been prophesied about, that people hoped for and longed for and prayed for, the Messiah who would usher in a new kingdom of peace and justice, a kingdom where the lame would walk, the blind would see and the oppressed would be set free. And isn't this the sort of kingdom that we all long for? A world where people are treated fairly, where justice is done, a kingdom without oppression or poverty or hunger, a kingdom where people live together in joyful harmony. And it is precisely this kingdom that Jesus inaugurated with his birth on earth. This kingdom that will be completed when Jesus returns. This kingdom that as his church we're responsible for showing and living and sharing. This kingdom that enables us to live in joyously and hopefully in these difficult times. Thirdly, the angel describes Jesus as the Lord. This baby is extraordinary. Of course, the shepherds must have realised that. 
Not many births, however important they are, and that are announced by angelic choirs. This baby is extraordinary and unique because this baby is God himself. This baby is the picture and the reality of God's love for us. God who loved us so much that he sent his son to become one of us so that we could once again be in joyous, perfect relationship with him. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. These words really were good news of great joy for the shepherds 2,000 years ago and are still good news of great joy for us today because they refer to Jesus, our saviour, our Messiah and our Lord and the reality that having a relationship with him enables us to live joyfully and well in the midst of the most difficult times. Some of you will have noticed this picture next to me. It was a goodbye present from the toddler group I helped with in Tunbridge. So as we walk into this next uncertain week, let me pray that lovely verse from Isaiah 55 over us now. Let's pray. We pray that we will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we come before you in prayer. We worship you. We acknowledge that you are the King of heaven and earth. Give us the wisdom to perceive you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to behold you, and let us know your presence in our hearts. Lord, you are the source of all true and lasting joy. Your wisdom is beyond understanding. You can meet all our needs and your unfailing love endures forever. We thank you that you are the light of the world and will shine throughout, turning darkness into light and providing hope for the future. We pray for the world in which we live. We think of the inequalities between nations and countries that are living with the effects of war, famine, poverty, natural disasters 
and coping with the effects of the pandemic caused by coronavirus. Strengthen all those who work for peace and justice so tolerance, understanding and peace may follow. We pray for our nation. We thank you that we live in a democratic society and have the freedom to worship you without fear of persecution. Give wisdom and courage to the leaders of our country as they implement guidelines to look after the health, safety and well-being of all residents. We pray for our local town as decisions are made which will affect our community, as restrictions are lifted, lockdown relieved and facilities return to normal. Lord, I pray for the church. During lockdown, churches worldwide have been a source of strength and support for many. Let us pray for all who minister to others. For our own leaders at St James, Jim and Parvin, Judy and Anthony, and give thanks for their energy and commitment. We thank you that the church has been flexible and creative and has adapted to new ways of working and it has been possible to continue with shared worship even if we have each been in the comfort of our own homes. Lord, you are the creator of heaven and earth. During this time of lockdown, we have had opportunities to appreciate the natural environment. We can rejoice in your creation. I pray we can be good stewards of all that you have entrusted to our care and treat the natural world with care and respect. We pray for others, for those in need at this time. Many people currently are feeling isolated and alone. Many are uncertain regarding their own financial or employment situations. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful. Protect them with your love. Give courage, strength or clarity to those who need it. Lift up all who are feeling low and we pray that they may rejoice in the comfort of knowing that you are a loving God. We pray for the sick or bereaved. Be close to those who are ill or afraid. Grant peace and comfort and uphold them in the warmth of your love. Support them in their concern. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. Give them an awareness of your sustaining love. Loving God, we thank you for feeding us with your word. Help us to have you at the centre of our lives. Take us individually. Give us wisdom, obedience and joy as we follow you. Thank you for hearing our prayers, for others and for ourselves and keep us in your care. Gracious and Holy Father, accept these prayers through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We say together in faith, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come, we believe in God the Father, who created all things. For by his will they were created and have their being. We believe in God the Son, who was slain. For and with his blood he purchased, purchased us for God, from every tribe and language, from every people and nation. We believe in God the Holy Spirit. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, even so. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Lord is here. 
His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, 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 holy Lord. Is the, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. the body of Christ to keep you in eternal life. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And the collect for today, the fourth Sunday of Trinity. Gracious Father, by the obedience of Jesus, you brought salvation to our wayward world. Draw us in harmony into your will, that we may find all things restored in him, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Each week as we've come to the end of our service, I've thanked all those who've been involved in putting together the different parts of the service. As the weeks go on and we continue to do this, I'm grateful for the resilience of many in the church who continue to offer things for our worship together. And now we come to our prayer of blessing. May God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, has given us the victory, give you joy and peace in your faith. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. And as you go into the coming week, may you go in the joy and holiness of the Lord. Amen. <laughs>